I know that I exist. I know my compound is not scarred by oblivious theoretics, knowing my interior skill to be a river which breathes, which conducts its respiration beyond a mortal confinement, beyond the substance of dogs or eels, so that one begins nascent accumulation in the realm not applicable to the neural, which seems to condone telepathy as dearth. Accumulation which cannot condemn rarity or just its means to malefically inspired fixity. There are days when I never ask if I exist, if I'm never reflected in bright and phlogiston carvings or curved pavilions of glass. What I say to myself concerns the ubiquitous, the simultaneous with vast interior instinct for the pelagic. In truth, be it liminal to Africa or to the Bay of Bengal, always subject to the non-arithmetic, to archery non-didactic as to scope or adventure. I am not the gamma involved in British national acclaim for ginger or clothes or camphor. This is why nations are ended, why Portugal has brightly dissolved into nullity. Do I consider myself some penultimate apparition, being the last to witness the ox on the ridge? The last to understand illusory deprecation magnetized by winds in tropical totality? Not that I attach any right to such self-interrogation or seek to foment prestige depicted as action by definite outward authority. I now no longer inflame myself with singular diagnosis, with boldness sought by inflammatory dicta. I remain indifferent to cold arterial power, to describing myself by numerical hurricane ballets equated with the sun beneath a subhuman species. Of course, I understand the precipitous, the sudden drone as inclined, as quickening the abyss bit by imbalance. I understand the volcanic, the inclusionary, the lake derived from a vicious source or absolute. I experience the mantra to cleanse the fana at its core, lighting a bonfire of fangs on my boat. For me, a storm, a chrysalis in movement, an ingestive dictation, luminous, enthralling me with the power of darkened specification of specific cyanide and conundrums. And for days now it has occurred to me that Giannini has ceased to appear, has ceased to bring to the fore a flank of slain, a drop a day. For what I ask of myself is movement, is the potent circulation of risk, of taking in my hands quickened lightning by tragedy a no instant by instant by gregarious greenness, by non sequiturs which accrue by means of nitrogen and honey. Then we came to Egyptian nautical development by perfect of aboriginal explorational intent, absorbing blank indelibles from the sea, only to reinjust its mystery into God, so that they quickened as cormorants, as great seductors of mirages, so that they rovably blend into a single avian without name, never once condemned by a wretched moral cinema, as if their descent were intensified as quantum persona, like a musically conducted solar water. As my trawler, as my glacial timber arc can never negate the lantern rig, or a triangular sail set obliquely on short masts. Yes, I've cut planks with axes, Use lashings of rope evolved from aggregate vegetable fibers, describing my boat with its boom, with its centerboard trunk, its jib, its shroud, its fable mooring cleat. But when a vessel is virtual, it appears and disappears, and so at times I am Egyptian or Phoenician, voyaging around phantasmal projections of Crete, again, being Phoenician, sailing off Cornwall in the mining of tin. Yet I have swayed from Thera Veda, dominant in Sri Lanka. Afro-Tibetan in the sense that I have absorbed the essence of Mahayana in a haze of links connected by samsara. So some could say my voyage is dukkha, is a cycle of privation. 
In a cycle of privation is in the complex doctrine of dependent origination. Now I know that I have practiced sila, and that I concentrate and that I open and close hurricanes with my fingers. And by practicing pana, it has given me the wisdom to kill, to mass behead. I go for a day. Yet I feel I've risen by right deeds, by seminal intent, by perfected speech, in carnivorous conduct, a livelihood conflagrant, indefectible as mindfulness, expanded to samadhi. But perhaps I'm not the immaculate Buddhist, the urn who lives to disrecognize, the, to transmute the arc of the tomb, wandering, perfecting the sense of cellular consociation. And that communion is horrific, is a magnetic scintilla clandestine with origin at the archetype of essence of innocence which unveils universe after universe, quenching in my person syllogistic desire for an optic harassment of steepened alchemical ionics. No, not a vertigo of insensation, not a vertigo corrupted by loosened chemical diamond or privy to the efflux of some nurse sharp. One could say that I'm greenish with jeopardy, with synergistic disdain, balanced by moral craters. Today, the sun, a dusky, spherical blizzard, a solemn stationary ash. As to personal defeat or horizon, nothing exists. Nothing carries an invicta for action. Perhaps I am a castaway, specifically listed in a diary of non-location. A tense comedic phantom who, for four days, four previous five gulls, has written for himself twelve squalls, three intermittent rainbows with an angular lava writhing on days when I suffer from pains of the immeasurable, from a glossary condensed with dominant pre-indicatives, as if to mimic myself with recitals of uncertainty, always paralleled by a code of dark incarnadine forms reacting as inherence. Not that I think it is Giannini attempting to haunt me, to invade my astral formation, to coax from my utterance the north of a weaving diode. I've spoken to him as a beacon, as a hunter for a drophidae in the void, who's left the beheaded remains, who's left threats in ventriloquial subsoma, messages whose life is complex germination wrought with momentous disfigurement. Perhaps a desire for prolixity is carnivorous exercise in self-grafting, attempting capacity as a higher breathing body, as a sigil become ocular poverty, whirling like a photopic fire by means of exotic ophthalmic judgmental. As if success could succeed by a code solely solidified by ravings, by mist which wafts through multiple dragon's orbits, or by the osmology from a compound trigger fish, as if Giannani hovered this side of primordial evanescence, giving to me signals poised upon connivance. The same could be said of a bibliography of gamuts finding themselves alive through mystical angularity, through nervous behavioral foundation. At present, you could say I suffer from a self-induced avalanche condition into a quandary of neurons. Perhaps I'm scattered self-description, that I'm a monoron deflected from penetrant volition concerning countable grains or a staircase constructed from a bluish idiogracia, which pertains to magical electrics, to ballistical unreasoning. You see, I'm diametrical to come My policy, never portends havens inducted between Olivium and journey, between the journey of a scarab and his sojourn to Heliopolis. I do not face narcoma, nor do I bait my time with any clinical clairvoyance. A clairvoyance delimited, profane, darkly abstract across its findings. I can only evince the electrical momentum of the stray, a momentum which feedingly cross beads with oceanic arcana, with a tumbled feeding oasis spun in accordance with strange pollutional migration.